Welcome back to my channel guys. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the whole home theater setup. It's going to be a high level summary. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the individual components in future videos, but for now, I'm just going to go through all of the components one by one, just a little bit of tidbit information on each. But before we go inside, uh, as you guys saw in my last video, I finally did close this space out. You know, I was one of the naysayers. This was always open all the way to that area. And I thought it wouldn't be a big deal. You know, I have 11 speakers in there. Uh, they're, and they're externally amplified. There's plenty of power. But once you close off a room, it makes a huge, huge difference. Completely worth it. So if any of you guys are on the fence, if they should close something off or not. I mean, I had it like this for seven years. And ever since we closed it off, even my wife wants to be down here all the time to watch any any shows or any big movies that are that are out. Before it would it would always I would always have to really invite her. I mean, it is a basement. You are subterranean. It's cooler than normal. So my wife is cold when it's warm, and that be becomes a hindrance for her to have to come down. But with this space being closed. You know, it just stays warmer. It's insulated. It's sound in, uh, sound insulated as well. There's, I think, rock wool that was used all the way around, and uh, the sound really stays incubated. So let's uh, go inside. By the way, before I do go inside, I thought it would be better to relocate this out here now that the door is closed. So when the kids or friends or whoever's over. Um, you know, whatever's playing inside, nobody has to go in there and disturb anybody. You know, they just kind of come here and look at what's uh, what's playing and what the runtime is, as you guys probably saw in my previous video. So I always like this little red uh, velvet rope thing. It makes it that much more official to say, please be seated. All right. So again, as you guys have seen in the previous videos, you know, this is the, the latest setup. I'll start in this corner for now. So this beastly speaker is the Polk RTIA. I want to say it's at least four and a half feet or uh, yeah, at least four and a half feet high. And it's, it's very heavy, about 75 pounds. So this thing is extremely power hungry. You know, I had this just powered off of my Denon 4300 receiver. Uh, did not do it justice. So it's externally amplified now with my um, Emotiva XBA-5. Uh, I've got two of them. One is overkill, but I'll get into that uh, in a minute. So that's the RTIA. You know, handles about 500 watts, and I've got 200 clean watts going to it. So the center channel is the Polk CSIA-6. This, in, in my opinion, is the weakest link in my, my system. I... I'm not too pleased or happy with the performance of this center channel. This is the biggest center channel that's made for the RTIA line. And I'm very picky about, about my sound. I'm, uh, I don't really mix speakers because I want everything to be timber match, you know, tonal balance and all that. Like, I don't want to introduce a new sound from a new speaker. So I'm living with this unless I want to really upgrade all 11 speakers. Um, I'm tied to this for now. I mean, it's 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 fine. It could it could definitely be better, and then below that is a SVS PB two thousand. Uh, this thing handles about five hundred watts. It really pounds the room. It's 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 good enough for this size room. I mean, you know, the, the on the wish list, uh, I wish I had a PB sixteen or something something bigger from SVS or even uh, some of the other uh, manufacturers that have been exploring or looking at i haven't gotten upgrade itis on the subs just yet i'm uh, i'm happy with it so i've got two of these one in the front of the room and there's another one behind the back row seats so to get even base distribution for the room itself um, do recommend two subwoofers located in different parts of the room uh, if possible and you know uh, beyond that the screen itself 106 inch uh, elite screens uh, screen but this may be going soon 
I have deliberately pushed my seating that much further back because my plan really is I don't want to see any speakers in the room. I don't want to see this front stage. I don't want to see these guys here. Um, I, I want to get a acoustically transparent screen and put these speakers behind that screen so that it's a, it's a perforated um, acoustically transparent screen. And, uh, you know, I can then elevate this speaker towards the center. These can sit a little bit higher. And um, um, in order to accomplish that, this entire screen would have to be built forward. So I'm mulling that over and just the logistics of how to get that to work. Um, I'm not handy enough to probably do that myself. So I'm probably going to get a contractor to, to help with that piece of it. So that is why the seats are somewhat more pushed back than what they were uh, uh, in previously. And in the walls, I've got, I've got the side surrounds and I've got rear surrounds. I don't know if you can make it out, but I, I never have the, the lights this bright in the room, but uh, just for the video's sake. So there's two more there in the back for the rear channel surrounds. And then there's uh, four Dolby Atmos. So these speakers are the R65 model Polks, and they are timber matched with the RTIA line. The, in the ceiling, I've got four of these um, RC60i uh, Polks as well, and again, timber matched. They have little tweeters. So what I liked about them is that the tweeters are, uh, they, they rotate, they're on a swivel, and they're all pointed towards the main listening position, which is that seat right here. So when I ran room calibration, everything's calibrated for the best seat in the house, which is this seat here. Uh, I mean, what calibration tries to do is uh, try to make it more of a balanced so sound in your seating area. But not to be rude, but I don't really care for the folks sitting in the back to have the best audio experience. I want to have the best audio experience when we're watching a movie, hence why it's all calibrated for this seat here. Uh, all right, beyond that, I'll talk about the seats in a minute. Uh, the equipment list, let me get this out of the way. So the equipment list itself, it's off right now, but uh, let me just turn it on quickly. For the sake of continuity, I wasn't going to, I was trying not to pause, but I should have in hindsight. Um, let me just start on the top. So I have an NVIDIA shield that's sitting right here. Probably the best media center that's Android based that you can buy. Uh, very high quality, does uh, up conversion as well of 1080p and it does it very, very well. Uh, you know, it uses uh, artificial intelligence as well. So it's a 2019 model. I've got another one upstairs on the uh, family room TV. You may be wondering why I have binoculars sitting here. Um, with the 4K projector, the pixels are very, very small. So when you want to focus onto the screen, I'm pretty picky when it comes to focus. I want it to be as sharp as possible. So your, your human eye from this distance can't see the little pixels. So with the binoculars, that's what I use to, to really tune, um, fine tune the, uh, the uh, uh, image itself. The projector is the Optoma UHD 65. I am very, very happy with this projector. Um, it may not have the highest spec uh, in terms of contrast or any of that, but uh, uh, I am very, very pleased with it. Uh, the image quality, the sharpness sitting, you know, from the main listening, from the main position, you know, it's about nine feet to the screen. And uh, the sharpness is just, in my opinion, incredible. So it, you know, it can be argued that it is a, a gimmicky uh, upshifter, but from I've seen a direct comparison between this and some of the very high-end native 4K uh, Sony's, and in a real-world situation, very very difficult to see the resolution difference. I mean, you need to you need to literally pause the screen on a side-by-side -side comparison to pick out that hey those few pixels are looking looking sharper so you know it's it's what where those guys went out is in better contrast ratios and 
better optics uh, that are that are used uh, the glass itself and all. But you know, officially, I guess uh, this UHD sixty five is uh, um, uh, it, it it allows each pixel to to fire twice. So there's 8.3 million pixels, and, and it really officially meets the 4K UHD uh, standard um, and, and therefore classifies as a 4K projector. So I'm very happy with it. Okay, going through the equipment list, there's the Denon 4300. I basically use that as a preamp. Um, I've got uh, I've got all the audio going out to the Emotivas. So below that is the Bass Shaker amp. It's a Dayton Audio SA320, I believe. And that just powers the Bass Shakers that are in the seats. Uh, here's the first XPA1, uh, XPA5, and then uh, the bottom one's the other XPA5. One's a Gen 1 and the other one's a Gen 2. So on top of that, everything's being controlled by Harmony. Uh, you know, automation is key. You want things to, to flow easily and automation is what allows you to then be able to play things with one button, turn things off with one button or use your voice because nobody wants to turn this on or that on. I don't want to have to mess with turning the side screens on um, or, or, or switch, you know, color on top. Like it's, it, it's, all, it's all at the push of one or two buttons um, on, a, on a remote. Lastly, uh, let me just talk a little bit about these uh, these seats. These seats are extremely comfortable. Uh, it's a it's a Canadian manufacturer, and they'll customize the seats for you as well. Um, the manufacturer's name is uh, Elren, and I again I am very very pleased with these seats. They're they're really high quality leather. They they're extremely comfortable to sit in. They they open very very smoothly. And, um, you know, they don't, they don't go completely back as flat as, as possible. But again, you don't want to be sleeping when you're watching uh, movies. Um, the, oh, the cup holders are lit completely inside as well. Uh, you know, again, gimmicky, but uh, uh, I, I like that. <laughs> the only minor issue, I, I, I would say, is that... The LEDs, you can't control the LED light uh, brightness. They are on full bright. So to the, to the extent that turning on the seat lights during a movie is completely not usable. So all this blue light that you see on the screen and around is all being cast from underneath the seats. So, you know, for photo ops and the stuff that I've been posting on my Instagram... You know, it looks gorgeous, but the usability when you're trying to watch it, watch during a movie, zero, because it completely washes, like, I mean, it, it completely ruins what's on the screen. It just completely starts dominating. So I, I, I never use it. Um, when I, when I do use it though, when, when, uh, is when we're not watching a movie and I'm just lounging in here. I just like the, the whole RGB look. Um, in terms of sitting here and, you know, even when, when we're not watching a movie, like I'll just, as I posted on my Instagram earlier today, I was sitting in the back seat working for a few hours, you know, uh, these screens were running on the side and the ambience in this room, ever since I closed it off, it's just, it, it really feels like I'm transported somewhere else. Um, so beyond all of that. I just wanted to at least give you guys a high level overview of all of the equipment in this room. There's probably a couple of things that I'm forgetting about. Maybe I'll just add in that uh, the, the rope lighting itself, you know, nothing fancy. I think it's about five meters of uh, rope lighting and it connects to the back. And I've got that also integrated with uh, the Harmony remote. So again, you know, when I say turn the theater on, uh, the light comes on and, uh, you know, the po movie posters turn on, the outside uh, posters turn on. And um, when I when I hit play, uh, full disclosure, I actually have all of the uh, all of the lights off. Everything is off. 
including the the side po uh, the side posters except with the exception of that first one on the right you know this one will get completely black with as you saw in my previous videos if you guys have seen it um, it just shows the runtime at the bottom and that's mostly for my wife who sits in this seat um, literally uh, uh, asking every five or ten minutes how much time's left no matter how engrossing a movie may be it's irrelevant she will ask how much time's left what's going on like you know uh, what's the end time all of that like you know it'll literally be every five minutes uh, so and besides asking questions all the time on every movie that's another uh, thing that she always does so it's a pet peeve of mine and she knows it <laughs> anyway um let me see if there's anything else in this room well what i what i will say is i'll i won't want to i don't want to make this that much longer i've already already 15 minutes in uh i will make individual um um further videos that talk in more detail about some of these components i just wanted to quickly run through all of the equipment that is in this room uh, by the way, it is felt on the on the walls. Um, you know, I wanted that whole bat cave look, and uh, it did help with the audio as well, with, uh, with better isolation, and um, and it uh, it completely darkened it out. So on this side, you know, where the new wall went up, uh, it is uh, it is drywall uh, with uh, uh, sound uh, isolation uh, insulation. Sorry, inside uh, as well. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Please do subscribe. Um, I wanna, I wanna continue making videos, and uh, and and hopefully, you guys are finding some of these things helpful. The intent of my my YouTube channel is not, you know, some aristocratic high end, ultra high end uh, um, uh, theater room. Um, this is, you know, uh, achievable. It's not a million dollar basement. It's all achievable. I mean, this is all stuff that um, I've kind of been doing on the uh, on my own, just adding and and upgrading constantly. So you know, please do subscribe because I I I do want I I wish I wish uh, more people can can at least learn a little bit and do certain things themselves, and that's where some of the savings uh, come in and allows uh, at least personally it allows me to do that many more upgrades. Uh, it's kind of a hobby of mine, you know, especially on weekends, uh, to come in and, and keep tinkering. Anyway, guys, thanks uh, a lot for watching, and uh, please do subscribe. Um, I'll, I'll come up with more videos. Please continue to comment. Please ask questions in the comments. Give me suggestions. Give me some feedback on what I should make additional videos on. I know the number one thing that keeps coming up still, although I made a movie on, uh, sorry, a video on. Uh, uh, on the uh, posters is um, the people there were some assumptions made when those those videos were made the, the some assumptions being some some computer know-how and uh, uh, a lot of folks want to do this that have no computer know-how so uh, what I will be doing in the future is with a lot more screenshots and with a lot more hand-holding um, much more specifics around how to get uh, these uh, these working over and above just talking about which apps and and how I've got it working. I'll I'll physically show it. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I know I I know I've ended this video four times, but uh, I keep thinking of things to to talk about. And, um, I'm sure there'll be lots more to talk about in future videos that are upcoming. So please do continue to watch. Thanks so much. Bye bye.